What is lie detection called in Japanese? We never even covered that. What's the art? It has an ending. And you would have. I know you've definitely read it. Just maybe didn't click. It's in Hatsumi's book, for sure. It is called. Jutsu. <laughs> what? Is <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, so I have it written a couple of ways because I've seen it written a few different ways. Kyo jitsu. Kyo. Which, kyo jitsu with an I means disgrace with the opposite intention. Kyo jutsu with a U is the art of present truth. Kyo jutsu ten kan ho, the art of changing, mixing lies and truth. Or Hatsumi in his book. Uh, at least in Ninjutsu history and tradition, when he mentions uh, Kyojutsu, it's, he says it's the uh, interchanging falsehood in reality or truth. And, but it's also, there's parts of it about, uh, there's even a section of spying. Like, so if you're listening to two samurai converse and you can't quite hear them, then you fill in the gap with missing information. Or there's the others is looking at them and getting. Uh, facial expressions to know whether they're lying and stuff like that. So that's the ancient way. <laughs> and there's a whole section in that thought you about it, which I haven't even touched yet. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to see what they say. Okay, I got a big one. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Keep that to yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> In fact, you don't get that kind of point out to why you should keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so under the heading, indirect answers. So this is when you're asking or interrogating someone and they don't give you a yes or no. So here's what I've inserted since then. Liars will work very hard to construct a story sequence of events that are plausible. So and that, that is like uh, someone's late for work and you're the boss. Why are you late for work? Then uh, they'll come up with a whole series of events that happened on the way to work. And they'll go to great lengths to to make that story. And then they forget <laughs> about... Sometimes. And yeah. that that's mentioned here. So repeating back an entire question is a stall tactic to think and indicates they don't want to answer you. Well, truth tellers might only repeat a part of the question to make sure you're both on the same page. So that an example of that is, uh, oh, you work in an office and the boss asks you, were you here? Did you work here last night till 7 p.m. Were you the last one to leave? And they say, was I here last night till 7, working overtime? Whereas someone else might be say, might just condense the question and say like, last night? So if they say the whole thing, they're thinking, but they're saying it all to buy time to think, sort of thing. So. Um, hostile sarcasm indicates they are fishing for information to see how much you know before answering. That means if you're auditing a department in your company, I don't know what company, but that's what I'm going with. And then someone from some another department hears about it, it's like, oh, I guess you're going to investigate us too for that missing money which means probably they took it and mm. they don't want you to you know <laughs> hostile so it's not it's kind of hostile sarcasm it's sarcastic but there's a tone that you know they're mad if a person should answer your question with i didn't do anything it's a way to psychologically get around the question i didn't do it mm. it which would refer directly to the act did you leave the doors unlocked last night at work? I didn't do anything. That's not a good answer. I didn't do it. That is a good that is a good answer. That kind of thing. Saying I didn't do anything is technically telling the truth without lying. Silence after a question is universe blah, 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 blah. universally accepted as a lie. Alternately, they may fill the silence with reading back the question to you in full, like we said before, uh, buying time. 
Non-answered questions can be an indication it's a lie, such as, that's a good question. Did you leave lights on? That's a good question. <laughs> Which serves no purpose. Or, Did I leave the lights on? I? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> or something along those lines, maybe. That's a good question. I'm glad you asked that. That's a legitimate concern. <laughs> Deflection answers such as, why are you asking me? Or how long is this going to take? Could be another stalling tactic, or could be a tactic to deflect interrogation down a different path. Interrogation, not not so much uh, just a single question, but maybe if you're a cop or a private investigator, literally interrogating them. Right? Another way of using repetition to confirm a truth or a falsehood is by saying, like I said to the last guy, or I refer to my previous statement, or if I got a dime for every time someone asked me that, or I said it before and I'll say it again, stuff like that. Because, uh, I don't know if I said it in the previous course, but there's one, if you don't believe something at first, they say if you hear it three or five times, you start to think it's true. So if they say, like I told the last guy, they're kind of faking a repeat, making you think it's been said a few times. Okay, so before I read this, I'm going to actually do it. Okay, Ezra, you need to slow down. What were you doing on it's this cool. day seven years ago? I have no idea. That was fast. That was fast. Okay, do you ask him? I'm gonna, okay, what were you doing on this day seven years ago? No idea. <laughs> I can't remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> okay, how about this? But if I think a little bit, yeah. I'll probably tell you what I did. 2012, <laughs> November 23rd, I was probably working. <laughs> okay. That wouldn't be which, true. Which may be true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay, so in this, in his case, there was a slight pause to think. How about this? Did you rob a bank on this day seven years ago? No. That was, that was faster. No, of course. So that's clearly the truth. Whereas they say a gap in answering could be, <laughs> depending on the question, like a, there's a there's a natural gap. Like if you say, what were you doing? I have a Buddha. Ask me something. <laughs> This is Jewish style because this is how the Jews are answering. Ask me everything. Something else? Oh, well, what, what, are you what are you doing on this day next year? <laughs> it is supposed for me to do something in this day next year? That's right. That's right. There you go. <laughs> I, I was in Israel many times and I was surprised because I knew it from stories. If you talk with the, the Jews and you ask them something, instead of answering, they ask they answer it with another question. Yes. And it's a question that is actually mm -hmm. challenging you, who asked the mm -hmm. first question, and it, just just to confuse you. Yeah. Like, well, that like before, you said, though. did you did you uh, mm -hmm. work last night? And the answer will be, uh, is I supposed to to be here last night? <laughs> And it's right away. Mm -hmm. Like they ask you right away. They don't stay to think about. They find that they they, they, they ask you back something. Like Interesting. That. So mm -hmm. it's hard to take a decision if it's whatever they say after yeah. is right or wrong or true or false. So, yes. Yeah, so depending on the question, then. Yeah. Mm. There could be a pause that's legitimate. Because if I ask, like I said, what did you do seven years ago? Just because you have to think about it doesn't mean you're lying. There's oh, a no. natural pause. But, you know, did you take the money from the cash register and there's a oh, long pause of five yeah. seconds? That's not good. Yeah. But this one, like, if you ask, like, what did you do seven years ago? Should I remember what I did seven years ago? <laughs> right away. Did, you know, did I miss something? Was I supposed to miss yeah. something? Yeah. Oh, my sister shared something on Facebook today and said, the best part of or said, one of the things you know when you've grown up, you're telling the old stories you used to tell when you were a teenager, the only difference is you're adding the illegal parts you skipped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh.
No, I got carrots in my mouth. <laughs> you could ask. Oh, I didn't put my notes in from today. I forgot. Darn uh -oh. You could ask a big <laughs> question, such as. I like carrots. They're good. Is there a reason why my coworker would say she saw you take it? This is one they did a lot with uh, O.J. Simpson on his trial. So nobody actually saw so-and-so take it, but they make you think like maybe someone, and you start to doubt yourself. Even though you have no idea if she said that. They will either say no if they're telling the truth or some other explanation if they're lying. Because they, now they're thinking, somebody knows a little bit of something, but not enough to convict me. So, well, I think OJ actually, in his case, he said, they said, was there a reason why your neighbors would say they saw you at her house that night that she was murdered? What's her name? Nicole. 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 Yeah. yeah. Nicole. And then he said, well, if I remember, he says, uh, well, I normally stop by every once in a while, and I did drive by that night, but the lights were off, so I didn't go in. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, now he admitted he was there. <laughs> Whereas a second ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't enough to say that he was in the house and killed her, but it starts to change, change things. And if, they, if that changes their story, that's not a good sign. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what I was supposed to add today was, uh, that's a big question. The other one was... Uh, Presupposition. So you presuppose something. Um, and that would go like... Uh, a guy is interviewing for a job somewhere. And he needs to go through a lie detector first or something. Or, I don't know. That's not the point. But anyway, so in his previous job, he had been accused of stealing drugs. So now, this time, when they're doing he says, so, out of all the drugs that were stolen, how many did you take? <laughs> so now he's got to think about it. Mm. He must know something, or he wouldn't have asked that question. Mm. Whereas, instead of saying, did you take the drugs? Did mm. you steal drugs? Whatever. So a presupposition is assuming that he did it and giving him a part of it to see if he'll fill in the information. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, don't use these big questions or these presuppositions, presuppositions more than once per hour. They will figure you out and keep them short as long questions will give them time to think. That was indirect answers. Now you've got it. Religion. Last time I said, they mentioned religion. That was all. But now I've added one more line. <laughs> they might use religion language too, such as I swear on a stack of Bibles. I that's still mentioning religion, technically. Or, honest to God, it wasn't me. But they're trying to they're trying to play a churchgoer kind of attitude. Like, it wasn't me. You know? Body language. I'm curious. I'm just look over every once in a while. <laughs> You're curious of what? I've been watching the eyeball. I'm always watching. That eyeball. Oh, the eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> they all see an eye. I hate cauliflower, but when you put it in there, it's really good. I don't know why. I hate broccoli, but when you put it in there, it's still terrible. It's still there. <laughs> I still hate. I it. prefer broccoli over. I like cauliflower, carrot, but when I put it in there, for some it's reason, a lot but better. I like cauliflower cooked, not raw. <laughs> Body language. Okay, a normal person would move their arms like crossing and scowl at the same time, but a liar will move their arms first, then scowl. That's the truth teller. The liar is <laughs> separately, supposedly. Separate. Okay. Or over there, most people believe. But the liar would be over there in two separate. Oh, point. Yeah. The the gestures, the hand <laughs> gestures, and what they're saying won't quite be in sync if they're lying. Mm. Intuition is now thought that perhaps unconsciously we recognize these body cues as lying. So pay attention to your instincts. An emblem is a body language sign used alone to portray a message like thumbs up or okay or come here. Or, so these things by themselves are called emblems. 
So, a liar will use partial or odd-looking emblems. Uh, odd-looking emblem. <laughs> Did, are you okay? Did you <laughs> steal anything? They might go. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, but they're not normal. Something will look strange when they do when they use uh, these things. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. An emblem. No, nope, we talked about that. A liar is. A liar when you. No. Nope, wait. <laughs> okay, a liar will use partial or odd looking emblems. Yeah, I said that. Yeah. Oh, illustrations like are similar to emblems. <laughs> but I like her. Shush! <laughs> <laughs> illustrations are similar to emblems but accompany words, such as rubbing his belly and stating that he's hungry. I'm hungry. So now there's an action with a word. I'm hungry. <laughs> Got <it> confused? <laughs> Remember what this is? Uh, Oh. Uh, <laughs> what? It means come here. Come yeah, to my I'll location. Yeah. <laughs> What's this mean? Well, generally, group up. OP was, or group up or OP group there, up. so. This one? Yeah, because we had one where it was uh, OP there for. Okay. Well, emergency, or sorry, at the fallback location as you were on March. Okay. In case you were ambushed or whatever, it was group okay. here. <laughs> Justice by itself, then, from what I remember, is mount up, mount. get in your vehicles, and maybe start your vehicles. This is stop. This is go faster. <laughs> 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 this is slow down. This is stop if you're backing someone up. But if you're mm. like, anyway. I remember that this <laughs> and that meant stop and get down. If you're uh, walking, yes. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're backing someone up. Yeah. Like, and they're looking at you in the rearview mirror, so that's stop, not slow down, and that's speed up. Or left, because you might do yes, combinations. Yes. Turn the wheel left and speed up. Or this is just keep going at your normal pace. That way, to steer the wheels, blah. <laughs> but I guess my point is those are all illustrations or emblems, right? Emblems. So, a liar's illustration, that's a action with words, will decrease or stop because he's so focused on his words. Mirroring, mm -hmm. I guess like this, maybe, and you too. Mirroring is a, where's my, I lost my spot. <laughs> Mirroring is a natural habit that people do to engage in a conversation, such as crossing their legs after you do it or leaning in when you do. So that's a uh, normal, you guys are sitting around uh, vegetables, and a housewarming party, and you guys are talking about something, and then you guys are engaged. So, you know, if you sit like that, there's a good chance eventually he'll sit like that subconsciously and lean in so he can hear better, and you know, that kind of thing. It's also part of hypnosis, but that's it's all it's, it's related. Nice scratching, eh? Yeah, yeah. So you like want to get comfortable and cross yeah. your legs, or <laughs> you're like, you're good. So, yeah. 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 yes. <laughs> and if a pet yawns, pretty good chance you'll yawn too. Contagious. <laughs> Liars will do the opposite of these normal social habits. So if during a conversation you feel awkward, this usually indicates something is wrong and the person could be lying. So if you lean in to talk, they may lean away if they are uncomfortable. Or they don't want to tell you a lie or you're asking them a question. They'll do opposite to the regular mirroring. Upturned palms like this, or hanging naturally at your sides when you're standing, is truthful body language. Hidden palms indicates lying. Like they'd be standing like this. Or, uh, I don't know. Yeah. At least like yeah. that, palms down. Uh, no, hidden palms is not the same as palms down. Palms down indicates assertion of power. Or comfort. <laughs> I can't imagine sitting like this. I know. Right? Mm. That's, That's uncomfortable. Magical. Yeah. Maybe on a in a on your boss's office and he's got both of his hands on his desk like this. I don't know. <laughs> you hit him with a big book. Ah, <laughs> uh, crossed legs or hooked ankles indicates fear or defense. Usually, 
in, a, in an interrogation interrogation setting, not necessarily like in standard conversation. But unless he's lying about something. Mm. If we told you he was a race car driver 10 years ago and he's crossing his legs, maybe he was not a race car driver. <laughs> or in modern terms, what do you call a race car driver today? Politically correct. A racist. A racist. <laughs> 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. If someone picks Lent, like this, turn a conversation or, you know, hair, Lent, this indicates to disagree with you or holding back information. Leaning away is also a sign of escape. Yeah. Grooming gestures also indicate deception. Stroking a mustache like this. Or adjusting glasses, straightening a tie, or the cuffs of your suit. His watch, moving strands of hair behind her ear, if it's a woman, like this. Or uh, even a glass of water is suddenly too close on the table, and for no reason they'll just push it away a little bit. Or a pencil, piece of paper is crooked, they'll start straightening things on their desk while you're talking to them. They might move objects around on the table or the floor, depends. Maybe they'll push on their garbage can or something, I don't know. Or if they're on a chair with wheels. You know, that's a big one. <laughs> when verbal and nonverbal language don't jive, usually the nonverbal is correct. That means, yes, I was not, I was, whatever, you know. I didn't do it. Yes, we want to see another video. <laughs> we did that last week. <laughs> Right near the, there was like 30 minutes left. I was like, oh, we could show another video. And he says, yes, we want to watch another video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brock Holt. <coughs> when asked a question that creates anxiety, your flight or fight response gets triggered. This will cause blood to rush to muscles for improved strength and stamina. To do this, <clears throat> Got a little bit of. Mm. I swallowed. I, I breathed in some of my spit. <clears throat> <laughs> to do this, it has to borrow blood from areas that can temporarily do with less blood, such as the skin in your hands, your head, and your face. So, you will unconsciously be drawn to those areas as they begin to get cold or itch. Or cold in your hands. It might start ringing in your hands. Or if they're itchy on their face because the blood is being drawn away because of anxiety. So, you know, this stuff is all signs. Always. Oh, I missed a line. That's a line indicator. Anchor points now. Anchor points are any part of the body that helps hold a person in position. There's a test after this, by the way. Actually, I did find a test, but uh, I'm not going to use it. So, uh, anchor points, yes. They're points that hold the body in position. Always both feet, even if one leg is crossed. Hands in the pockets or on an armrest, like this, or like this. I should do it on this side. Those are anchor points. Um, your back and your butt, if you're sitting in a chair. Anxiety will cause a person to shift any of these anchor points, especially a free foot, no resistance. So if he has one foot like this, it will just start to dance. Because mm. it's the easiest one to move, the rest of them are secured. But them too, like your shuffle his feet, you might need to... You know. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Those are bad signs. <laughs> Maybe grabbing the armrests, like uh, President Clinton did. If they move one or many of these anchor points, that's still considered one deception indicator, so don't count. Mm -hmm. Because earlier we said uh, one is not enough to conclude they're lying. It should be several. Yeah. Actually, I think it says here five, right? You should for look for at least five of these signs to be convinced they're lying. So uh, any of this shifting is one, not multiple. Okay. Hmm. That's page one. Someone can have it if they want. Thor <laughs> <laughs> can have it. <clears throat> we feel I'll be there. Eyes. Forever. Blink rates will increase. Mm -hmm. so, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, that movie. Oh, movie. I just noticed it. Uh, oh. 
Yeah, it's oh, somebody's watching. <gasps> They're late to the party. <laughs> is it doing it again? Or did it... No, it's working. It worked. It worked? Oh, yeah. okay. <clears throat> so another one is uh, the pupils will dilate when they lie. <laughs> Overreactions. We're in that category now. As an, <clears throat> as an interrogator, leave the room once in a while, and every time you come back, move the chair a little bit closer to the suspect. He will get uncomfortable and not understand why, and will start thinking you already know the truth. Then he may spill the, spill his guts, not your guts. Well, he might spill yours too <laughs> <laughs> if he's got a knife. I don't know where to hide them. So, so that's why, like, if you watch, I don't know about cop shows, but if they know about it, but generally. The interrogator might go up for no reason and come back and just shove the chair just a little bit and they don't notice. But then you get closer and closer and then they start getting worked mm. up. Like, uh, I feel uncomfortable, but I don't know why. They don't understand why. Uh, let's see. The voice. After an interrogation, look for signs of relief, as this could indicate that they feel their deception has worked. Make a liar retell his story. Or ask about things out of sequence. This will force him to think very hard to keep things in order, like you had said. Say hi. <laughs> hi. Who's there? Can I do this? Will it work? Who's there? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> the face. That's easy. Watch for micro expressions. We kind of talked about that. That's uh which is little tiny or mm -hmm. smiles with Wink. half a face. But when they happen, they're going to be so fast. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm reading a book right now, reading with my ears <laughs> through an audio book. And um, he said micro expressions happen so fast that they're almost useless. But in another book, mm -hmm. the first one, because this is my second book, the first one they said that they're very important, so pay attention to them when you watch them. So there's contradiction there, but still. What I would say if someone's disgusted with you, if you're at a bar and he's like, hey, lady, you want to come to my house? And they go like this. There's yeah. a good chance they're disgusted with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you can, you can see it. Right? It depends. If you're at the bar, you can be pretty drunk. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> and signs. If you have difficulty at first remembering any and or all of these, you could follow the basic approach, B-A-S-I-C, which is, this is to help you remember, baseline behavior, B. That's the first, what are they normal? Or ask them some questions that are definitely, yes. Are you sitting down? No, that's too obvious. <laughs> if you know their name, or uh, if they tell you your name, pretend you didn't hear it. Like, what? did you say your name was John? Like, yeah, that, so you're kind of getting some baseline. Or just watch them, you know, what's normal for them. A, the A of basic. Ask open-ended questions. Try to stay away from yes and no. Study the clusters, all the little details. That's S. I, intuition in the gaps. That means, as you got telling you. And C, confirmation. That's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Unless... You don't. Want. <laughs> That's all the new information. When you watch, uh, like, CSI or something, CSI, or, and they're like interrogating the suspect, and they're behind <laughs> the like glass window, and then they're watching. Who's ever behind there is watching them answer or their questions and stuff. Yeah. So sometimes they might see something, and then when the guy comes out, they'll say, oh, he did this when you asked him this. I tried doing this, and then... <laughs> That's kind of cheating. Or the interrogator will get out and come into the back room and go, hey, buddy, and then go back <laughs> just to move the chair a little bit. Yeah. Or um, Our in the, cop, bad cop. <laughs> the book I'm writing now, which is by a CIA guy, he says that police are trained in this but not too good like I it's basic good. but he yeah, said the cia has an entire when you go into cia mm. school or whatever like recruitment process there's a huge section on polygraph taking how to take how to conduct polygraph exams how to beat them what to look for without one and how not to show it and there he even told the story about there's a guy in 
some Arab country, I can't remember, he was a, an informant for the CIA, or not an informant, he was a paid. What is, what's the word? Paid. Informant. Not usually. Paid informant. A paid mm. informant? Like he was a, sort of an agent, not really, not officially. For 20 years, mm. they've used this guy to get intel on uh, Al Qaeda or something. And then, so in the story he was telling, he said, uh, all the people that they use in these situations, they have to put them through a yearly polygraph test just to make sure. So this guy had taken 20 polygraph tests through the 20 years and he passed no problem every time. And the guy's like, this is gonna be a walk in the park because we've done this every, every year. And this on the 20, year 20, mm. he caught something that made him think. And then he started asking more questions. And by the end of the interview, the guy spilled his guts and said he was a double agent mm. for the other side trying to get information from us all this time uh, and they never knew it and they've been feeding him information straight mm -hmm. and they were so mad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they make it another day <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow yeah that's weird <laughs> okay so uh, i have a video i have some videos i have lots of videos <laughs> yeah you do so we'll start with one how many <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> I know on one of those live PD shows, they said that uh, they showed the video of the guy in the cell. They said, uh, someone who's guilty will roll over and go to sleep. They said, if they've arrested somebody who's not, they tend to pace almost all night. Really? Oh, that makes sense. I, I, yeah. don't know. I will be opposite. <laughs> if opposite, I, opposite yeah. if i'll be not guilty if i'll go to sleep without problem they can do nothing to me i'm not guilty well, a lot of people get severely anxious that they've been arrested yeah. for no reason uh, yeah that's true they said a lot of the criminals mm. will look at it as well might as well go to sleep so not going anywhere is it? yeah uh, well that's why these are not absolute Live detection techniques, mm. people are different. Yeah. For me, I would be more concerned how much they know. They know something, they mm. don't know, so I will be <laughs> awake. <laughs> well, you know the old story about if you go up to someone, like someone you kind of know, like a coworker maybe, and you just say to them, I know what you've done. Chances are they will think of something, think of it, yeah. <laughs> right? It's like, damn, how did he figure it out? <laughs> When really, you know, you don't know shit, right? So, <laughs> more fun that way. Yeah. 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 Like a, what would that be called? Is that a bait or a presupposition? Presum presumption. That is a, I think that's more of a bait question. It's a bait. Yeah. Mm. It's a bait. Because you're trying to get them to talk. Because they, they will ask, what are you talking about? Yeah, you know, two days ago. <laughs> you just fish a little bit. Oh, actually. And if you are, and if you are lucky, <laughs> You strike gold. <laughs> so, okay. That reminded me of one of the stories in the audio book about uh, there was a company hiring a guy and they it was very important that he have a good record for something. So they found out he did drugs 20 years ago, marijuana or something, I don't know, and he get a small charge. Anyway, so, but he said that he was squeaky clean initially. And then they called him up and said, we found this because they had really good investigators trying to. So they told him that they found the drug thing. And he's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right. I was down, stupid, whatever. I'm like, well, you know, it's not like you kill someone. And then there was dead silence on the phone. Uh, no. And the guy's like, he thought it was strange. So he didn't say anything either. He waited him out. And a good 30 seconds went mm -hmm. by, and the guy says, how the hell did you find that out? <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that his he did kill someone in a bar brawl. Mm -hmm. His brother worked in the FBI and had his record expunged. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he basically told on himself, right? <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> you just told me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You, sir, are a dumbass. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. But I suppose maybe if you actually kill someone <laughs> and then that happened, you might think it was a very strange question. Or it's not even a question. The guy just said, at least he didn't kill anybody. 
and you wait and you wait. Well, generally, if you hear that phrase, it should be yeah. It's like you just laugh it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I went dead silence for thirty but, seconds. That's not good. The easiest way is just to say, "Hey, you're right." <laughs> That's it. Say it right away and yeah. Okay, right. um, well, so the first one. I, I don't even know how long. I think it might be 15 minutes long in this video, this first one. And then we can talk about it. And there's some advertisements in between. I'll try and skip over those. <laughs>